Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright here, consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the iClearscope endoscope. And here we have a patient who used a cotton swab, what we call in the UK a cotton bud. Um, and all they managed to do was to really impact this wax right up against the eardrum. And the patient did find the procedure somewhat uncomfortable, even um, when I make the slightest contact with the wax. You'll see it in a moment, I think, when I go more to the top of the ear canal where the wax is there. And as soon as I made contact, the patient flinched and had to come out the ear. So this is the dangers of using a cotton swab. Um, is you, you may believe that you're removing the wax. Some people may be very lucky if you've got a, uh, some sticky wax um, in the outer third of the ear canal, for example, and you put the cotton bud in, it may stick to the end of the cotton swab and uh, come out as you withdraw with the cotton swab. But more often than not, all you're going to be doing is pushing the wax further in. A lot of people um, comment that when they use a cotton swab, they can see the wax um, gather on the on the wall at the end but that's surface wax so even if it's invisible to the naked eye our most of our ears anyway is lined with a very thin veneer of wax and that wax is there as a protective mechanism it's there to protect the underlying skin it's acidic so it inhibits harmful bacterial growth and um, it's hydrophobic so it helps to repel external water and finally um, the oil, uh, the wax itself, which is composed of oily lipids, oily sweats, dead skin and loose hairs that have fallen out in the outer third of the ear canal. It's quite sticky, so almost like a, uh, a spider's web. So any foreign particles that may enter the ear, it sticks to the wax. And our ear self cleanses itself of wax. The, the skin that the wax is sitting on, as that skin dies and sheds, it moves like a conveyor belt out of the ear. So that skin migration expels any wax sitting on the surface so when you're when you've got a cotton swab and you're swirling it around in your ear you probably are just gathering some of that surface wax which is not including it's not as i said quite often it's actually invisible to the naked eye it's only when you start rubbing against the side of the ear canal that you'll see it in fact cotton swab use can induce um, additional wax because um one of the components of wax, which is an emotional sweat, this sweat is, is made up, it's sort of like the sweat we find on our brow when we're hot. Um, so that's called ecrine sweats. And that's, um, uh, its function is to do with thermoregulation of the body. So as our body heats up to cool it down, um, th these ecrine sweat glands secrete this watery, salty sweat, and it forms into droplets. And heat is required um, to, to evaporate that sweat. So that's how um, these sweat droplets help to cool down the body because the, the, the heat you're giving off, it's used in that reaction to evaporate the, um, the sweat droplet. The sweat in the ear is slightly different. It's emotional sweat. So it's, uh, it's, it's secreted as part of the flight and fight response. Um, and Mechanical milking, so apply basically applying pressure to the outer third of the ear canal, it helps the emotional sweat travel up um, the glands. So the glands that secrete this emotional sweat, they're modified sweat glands, they're called apocrine glands, and in the ear, they are actually called ceremonious glands. And they're based in the dermis layer, which is a second layer of skin. So the, the outer layer of skin is the epidermis layer, that's your protective layer, it protects the inner um, parts of the skin. Then you've got the dermis where all the blood supply is, all the nerves, um, and also um, the hair follicles and the ceremonious glands and also sebaceous glands which secrete the oily lipid secretion called sebum. And then underneath that you've got the hypodermis layer also known as the subcutaneous layer which is predominantly made up of fatty tissue so it acts like a buffer and it helps to warm the underlying bone or cartilage that it's sitting on. So by applying pressure with a cotton swab actually on the surface of the outer third of the ear canal, you're actually squeezing um, the emotional sweat from the ceremonious glands to the surface. So there's channels and pores. Some of these ceremonious glands are connected to the hair follicles and it travels at the, the root of the hair, the shaft of the hair to the surface. So you're actually possibly inducing more wax buildup because the more emotional sweat you bring to the surface, the more... Uh, wax formation you're going to get so you can see we can see half the eardrum there um, I've managed to loosen the majority 
I think so. Hopefully this comes away a bit easier. I'm going to have to use a fine end. It's still a little bit impacted on the eardrum. Now, it was very obvious to me that this patient did use uh, a, a cotton bud. and But when I first asked the patient, they were, uh, said that they didn't. Um, but I later asked the patient again, are they sure that then they admitted to using it? Um, it's important that if you have, the, I'm not going to slap it on the wrist, I might slap someone on the wrist, um, <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a jokey manner really, but um, it's important that if you have used a cotton swab, do advise your specialist because it, it kind of helps us perform the procedure in some way because um, we can um, then account for that, if that makes sense. We can... Um, we know the challenges that are ahead of us. Uh, we can put some olive oil, medical grade olive oil, to help lubricate the wax off the eardrum. So, do tell us. Um, it, it is important. Um, whenever anyone uses it to me, I, I do explain at the end of the piece. I just give them some ear care advice. But we're not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you off anyway. But I will <laughs> um, kind of um, give you a nice lecture at the end of the, of the procedure just to one of the risks also if you use a cotton swab you're actually damaging that outer epidermis layer of skin which is a protective layer so you can cause micro abrasions and as i said that outer layer of skin is really really important in the transportation of wax out of the ear but also bacteria so back harmful bacteria so pathogenic bacteria that may be residing on the surface of the skin if that skin fails to migrate um, and expel itself from the ear that pathogenic bacteria is in the ear for longer therefore it's more likely to colonize reproduce and then lead to an infection so that migration process it's not only to help the ear expel skin otherwise our ears will be full of skin um, and also to transport wax out of the ear it's also um, there to help um, expel any harmful bacteria or even fungi that are sitting on the ear or on the surface of the ear canal so when you abrase that you're breaking down that mechanism. Think about a rail track. If you take one of the piece of the track away, the train is not going to be able to um, travel any further. And it's the same with the skin. If you break that uh, conveyor belt, um, it's no longer able to migrate laterally out of the ear. So, um, and also, it, a lot of people, it, um, if they've got an itch, they use a cotton swab. And I get that. Um, it's, uh, it's a catch-22 if you've got an itchy ear and you want to you feel like scratching it you can use some uh, acetic acid spray in the uk we, we can buy it over the counter called ear calm it's, it's basically white vinegar it's um really low ph so it's acidic spray and it not only does it because a lot of this itchiness can be caused by bacteria and fungi so by reacidifying your ear it can sometimes help to alleviate um any itchiness there's also uh, some drops that we actually sell on our clear wax website to the public it's only available in the uk or we only sell it in the uk um it's called clear relief drops and it contains uh, glycerol so glycerol is a, an oily um, a substance which helps to uh, moisturize the skin so that itself can help prevent dry cracking skin but it also contains a bit of um, lidocaine which is a, a a topical anesthetic that a dentist generally use so that can help numb the ear as well. Um, so there, there are the tricks. But when you graze the ear, when you've got an itch, you break down the outer of skin, the epidermis. When that skin regrows again, you're going to get an itch. Uh, so that the regrowing of the skin can itself give an itch. So by kind of temporarily relieving yourself of an itch, you're almost guaranteeing yourself an itch later on uh, in a few weeks. Now... If you guys have been watching my videos, you know it's quite important that we try and remove the skin purely for just to make sure there's no underlying uh, pathology like a canal cholesteatoma. So I don't get all of it out, but I've got enough out to be sure that there's no underlying pathology. So I'm just using the fine end suction probe here, gently peeling away. You've got to be really, really gentle. We're on the the last um, five millimeters so where the suction tip is now that's about five millimeters away from the eardrum this is probably the most sensitive part of the ear uh, there's an isthmus you can see the ear canal narrows there's like a valley here then it widens again so we just want to avoid touching the canal wall it is very difficult because the skin is sitting on the surface and i'm gently trying to peel away i'm already confident at this stage there's nothing else to be worried about there's no underlying pathology there yeah. there's no erosion there's no discharge the eardrum is bulged, the patient had been blowing his nose. Uh, we, we, we measured that 
using a test called tympanometry where we can assess the middle ear function. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.